Let's give a warm Austin welcome to Emily Rios. teleprompter deadline, so pardon me. <laughs> um, well, thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, I do feel like we're doing this backwards. It should be uh, me and the rest of uh, us giving you the human rights campaign. An award for all the brilliant work you do in your organization, your relentless fight for equality and support for this community. With that being said, I wanna say thank you I am so grateful and humbled, and to be honest, the fact that you're acknowledging and honoring me today for being myself, for some reason, brought up feelings of unworthiness. As I started to dive into what these feelings brought up and why, I realized that I was conditioned to think this way, and I know I can't be the only one. Growing up in a religious household, I was taught to believe who I am at my core is fundamentally wrong that I was somehow born defective because I am a lesbian. I fought these intense battles within myself for years between what I felt in my heart and what I was taught to believe. It was torture. As a child and a teenager, I had so many questions I was afraid to even think about, let alone voice. I truly believed in the thought police years before reading Orwell's 1984 because I had been raised reading the Bible. Seeking therapy came way later on in life. <laughs> Growing up, it was just an unwritten rule that you don't talk about what happens in your house and you don't share your problems with a stranger. I tried appeasing my guilt by using and abusing my body to try and force a romantic connection with the opposite sex. What ensued was this manic depression that brought about a numbing sensation that I pursued even after I came out and began living my truth. Then into adulthood came the deep-rooted shame, shame for never speaking my truth, for the time wasted, for not fighting harder, for being complacent, lying down and living in fear. Mind you, I had all these thoughts and I grew up in California with semi-supportive and understanding parents. What I've come to realize is you can try until you're blue in the face to try and will someone into believing and feeling what you want them to believe and feel, but you will never be successful. Speaking from my own experience, I tried to follow a particular road that was set out for me, and I was so determined and one-track minded that I was sure I'd never steer off course, even though I felt like it was to my own detriment. When I finally made the decision to go down the path less traveled, I thought I'd feel relieved, some pressure released, the weight off my back, easier, softer breaths, but that wasn't the case. Because I had already been conditioned to think a certain way, before I could take that sigh of relief, I first had to unlearn everything I was taught and basically reprogram my way of thinking. This has been the most important work I've ever done in my life and it is still a work in progress. The truth is I was not born defective. From the moment we are born, we are all divine perfection. Every single person goes through different developmental stages, and it is cruel to deny someone the freedom to explore that. There are no two people exactly alike. There isn't a one-size-fits-all method to how we're all supposed to be. I am fearful about what's happening in our country with this demand to enforce censorship. We will be feeling the ramifications of this for generations to come. When you try and silence someone, their pain, their anguish, their frustration surfaces in other ways. And for some, I fear the consequences of that will be irreversible. To my chosen family and my community that are suffering either directly or indirectly from what is unfolding, I am deeply sorry and I stand with you. I battled censorship within myself and it had debilitating consequences. <clears throat> Ultimately, we just want to be seen and to be heard to be accepted if not understood, to be treated fairly and with dignity, to be granted our basic human rights to live our true authentic selves. 
So my deepest gratitude to the Human Rights Campaign for this recognition. It is, for me, the highest honor and my greatest accomplishment. And in case you haven't been told today, here is your reminder. You are beautiful. You are vital to human life. You are divine perfection. Thank you.